Hi there, everyone, and welcome to Paper Wishes Weekly Webisodes. I'm Sarah Newman, and I'm so excited to show you these beautiful supplies from our friends at Stamperia. So today we're playing with their Desire Collection, which features some absolutely beautiful papers and coordinating die cuts. So let's take a look. Let's start with the maxi backgrounds. Now this contains 10 sheets of double-sided 12 by 12 pattern papers, and you can see swatches of them here on the cover, but let's open this up and take a look. Now we've got really lovely and timeless designs, some sheet music, some faux texturing on here. Some of these designs look like they've been aged. Stamperia does this look so beautifully. Now these are all over designs, but of course you can also cut apart a lot of these papers to use them in strips and borders if you want to. This is a really nice overall design that can also be cut apart, one of my favorites. This is another one of my favorites too, although I have to say, as we're flipping through these, it is so hard to choose just one favorite. Lots of roses and florals, sheet music, and text on here too. So this is the pattern paper collection. Now to go along, there is a sheet of rice paper as well, because this is what Stamperia does so beautifully. And here we've got uh, some, again, sheet music, some text, and those beautiful florals. And we'll talk about how to use that rice paper. Now to coordinate, we've also got a pack of 28 chipboard die cuts. And these have a really unique style. There are labels, there are florals, there are musical instruments, and some old fashioned tango dancing too. Now everything is coordinated to make it easy to create beautiful projects. So today I'll share a few card designs with you and a couple of fun techniques. And we'll add in a bit of sparkle and shine with some favorite mixed media supplies from our crafting stash. As you can see, we have a lot to explore today and I'm so glad you're here. Come play with us. Let's start with this card, which features these gorgeous papers and chipboard die cuts, plus one of my favorite cutting dies, the circular step card die, which gives our card this unique shape. So let me open this up and we can see on the inside how fun that is. It's something really kind of special and different. Now it's super simple to put together. So let's start with our die. We can take a closer look at this. So as you can see, it's just one piece in here. And on the die, you can see where your cutting edges are as well as your folding. So what I would do is just grab a piece of pattern paper. And I love double-sided pattern papers for this because you've kind of got your inside and your outside of your card ready to go. So what you'll do is figure out which section of the paper you want to have as the front and which you want as the inside. And then you can simply flip this over so those cutting and scoring lines are facing your paper. Secure it down with a little bit of uh, low tack tape. I use the hunky dory tape and then run it through your die cutting machine. So of course with a paper that's patterned with stripes or um, a pattern like with borders, you can decide whether you want them to go vertically or horizontally. That's a lot of fun and you can decide, hey, maybe you want that to be the inside or the outside. So a lot of possibilities with that. Then once you have die cut your piece, all you need to do is refer back to that package, flip it over, and you can see the diagram on here for your scoring and folding. So I've got a card piece that I've die cut just from plain gray cardstock, so you can see what that will look like and where those mountain and valley folds will go. Pretty simple, this one. What I also recommend is that you grab a bone folder and just give those lines a nice crease and that will help things to stay flat, especially if you're working with a heavier weight cardstock. And then once you've got this all folded up, you are ready to decorate it with what other, whatever other elements you want. Now for my card, I wanted to add a little bit of sparkle. So I don't know if you can see this, it's on this piece right here, as well as a bit on the front. Maybe as I'm tilting this, you'll be able to see a little bit of shine on there. It's a pretty subtle effect, but I really like it, especially because you can feel it. Now this is from the uh, Frosty Sparkle Glitter Kiss, one of my favorite mediums to work with. And let me show you how simple this is to use. I'm just gonna move these out of the way and bring in a piece of 
black cardstock because this shows up really well on black cardstock. So this is a really fun glittery medium. And of course, it is simple to apply. This is from Creative Expressions, and I love how they include this little sponge applicator in a lot of their mediums that we have here at Paper Wishes. So just load up some of that beautiful sparkle medium and apply it with either a heavy hand or a light touch, just depending on the look you're going for. And there you can see how pretty that is on the black cardstock. Of course, you can use it on whatever color of cardstock you want to or pattern paper. So let me show you a couple of other ones. Now here's a sheet from today's collection, a black um, pattern design. And I've just applied a light touch on here, so that looks really pretty. Also a darker shade of pattern paper, that beautiful red. And you can, of course, go lighter. Here's a really pretty teal design from the collection today. And this is what it looks like on white. So if you were wondering how it looks on really pale cardstock and paper, it has a really soft and subtle effect. One that is perfect, as you might think, for Christmas cards. So you've got a little touch of snow on there as well. So if you're looking ahead to your Christmas cards, that may be just up your alley. So after I've added the um, glitter kiss on there, then I just need to let that dry and I can carry on decorating this. So I love this top portion. And again, I'm going to show you on our undecorated piece. This top area here is perfect for adding large elements like today's collection of die cuts, which has some substantially larger elements on here. And what I wanted to do is start with a circular section here. Now this is a circle cut from pattern paper and the coordinating scalloped circle on here. And that's from a cutting die from Hot Off the Press. So I've added some of that <laughs> frosty sparkle glitter kiss on here. And I also inked around the outside edges of that circle with jet black stays on. Then I positioned this on top of the card to create a space for the collage of chipboard elements. So I have this beautiful portrait image here, which I've also inked plus a rose chipboard element and the dancing shoes, as well as a script dazzle message, and that just fits on here perfectly, and a little bow. Then for my card inside, I have a coordinating dazzle message and this rose chipboard piece too. So I think you can see how easily these pieces come together really beautifully and give you opportunities to create some cards with unique style. Speaking of folded cards with unique style, this trifold surprise card is another fun way to combine these pattern papers and embellishments. So when I open this up, you can see plenty of places for messages, die cuts, and other elements here too. And then when I flip it over, you can see I've still got some of that beautiful patterned paper on here. So as before, this is a cutting die. Let me show you this. Here's the package. So as you can see, it's just one piece again. And then also on the back, you've got your folding instructions on here. So let me show you what this will look like once you've got it die cut. And I've just done this from plain white cardstock. So it will open up like this. Now, that's how I've chosen to decorate my card and to orient my card. But I also want to point out you can definitely have this going the other direction too, if you want to. So you've got some versatility with this die. There's not really a right or wrong way to put it together. So again, once you've got that figured out which way you want it to go, then you can start the fun of decorating. Now here I've used Hot Off The Press's oval cutting dies for our chipboard dancer here. And this is just to create a nice spotlight effect. Um, for our chipboard piece. So I've cut this from pattern paper and this from just plain black cardstock. And that's going to help create some visual space around this element and help it to stand out. Now I've also embellished her with some paper flowers. Now these are from the 49 and Market Midnight Royal Posy set of handmade paper flowers. These are a lot of fun to work with. You can just simply glue them down as they come and that looks really pretty. You can also accent them with some of our glitter kiss, which is what I did here. So all you need to do is take advantage of that sponge applicator, although I have to say I use my fingers for this too. Just dip that in 
and apply it directly onto those petals. So as you can see, just kind of holding this, maybe gently going around the outside edges there. And then you just need to let that dry and you are ready to add it onto your card. It won't take very long to dry at all either. So just give it a couple of minutes and you're set to go. So here I've got my two um, dazzly glittery flowers. I've simply glued them on either side of the card here. And I've got a script dazzle here as well. Then when I open it up, I've got some more dazzle messages. Now this little strip is cut from that border pattern paper that we just saw, and that's just adding some visual balance to the card as well. So I'm working in with that navy blue, also bits of black in here too, just to keep everything coordinated. So super simple card design to do and one that is a lot of fun. Now I've got another card project that I want to show you. And this also takes advantage of those beautiful pattern papers. So here I've simply cut a piece of pattern paper slightly smaller than the card front. Now before I glued it down, I first inked around the outside edge with black, then I added some glitter kiss around the edges. Now for that, it's really important to use an ink like stays on. Because this is a solvent ink, it won't smear when you add a medium like glitter kiss on top of it and it won't get ink on your Glitter Kiss applicator. So keep that in mind. So let me just show you quickly. I'm gonna bring in this piece of pattern paper and just grab my ink pad and ink around the outside edge here. So I'm just going on this side here. I can ink it pretty heavily. I can really ink it heavily if I want to, kind of depending on the look I'm going for. So I think you can see that black edge around here. Then all I need to do is just grab my Glitter Kiss applicator and add a bit of shimmer and shine along the edge. Now I can also kind of sweep this in more toward the surface of that pattern paper. Again, just depending on the look that I'm going for. But as you can see, that black ink is not smearing with the application of the Glitter Kiss. So another nice technique to keep in mind. Now, because this pattern paper is so richly designed, I can keep the rest of my card fairly simple. So here I have a chipboard fan die cut. And I've created a little cluster on here. More of the paper flowers. I did not add any glitter kiss on those, so those are just plain. And then I've got a snippet of plain white cardstock back here. Now, to create this, I'm using the fancy lattice die. Let me show you that. This one is from Hot Off the Press. This is a favorite of mine too. I really like this piece. Just create some really simple dimension on cards and create some nice background effect. Now what I've done with this, once I've die cut it, and the piece will be slightly larger than this, you can either cut, you can also just simply tear this apart to give you just a little snippet to be working with. And that just layers up on top of here. Really easy to do. Then I've got my Believe chipboard piece. I've got a little bit of twine on here as well. Now when I open this up, I've got another little snippet of that same die, this time cut from pattern paper. I've got a few more chipboard elements on here and a swatch of rice paper. Now, we haven't talked about rice paper yet, so let me grab a few supplies and let's take a look at a couple of ways to use this. So rice paper is something we use a lot around here and Stamperia has so many beautiful designs to play with. Now rice paper is a lightweight paper which can be torn and layered to add pattern and texture to your projects. You can see I've just used a little snippet of it here. So let's take a look at how to use this. Now here's the entire sheet that we're working with today. As you can see beautiful rose imagery on here and some text. I've got this just layered onto a piece of white paper because I want you to see how positioning this on top of a white surface will really allow those images to pop. Now, if I wanted to get a subtler effect, I could put it onto a darker surface, something the same color as my craft mat here. So I think you can see the difference between those two, the white and a darker surface. Of course, you can also experiment with craft cardstock, black cardstock, lots of different options for you there. So let's see how we can tear this and how we can glue it. I'm gonna put this aside and bring in just a torn snippet of this beautiful paper and some white cardstock. 
Now to tear around the edges of this, all you need to do is just use a damp paintbrush and positioning this onto your craft mat, just paint some water on here and then you can just gently tear these pieces apart like so. And then you've got a beautiful kind of feathery edge on here. I think you can see this. Now, when you're tearing this, you may bump into some of these fibers. I think you can see these fibers on here. It's almost like a mulberry paper. If you're tearing and you bump into one of those fibers, just use a pair of scissors to snip that apart and then continue tearing and you'll have your piece. Now, when you're gluing, what I recommend you do is Depending on the size of your paper, you can either apply your glue onto the surface you're positioning your rice paper onto, or you can put it onto the rice paper. I've got a fairly large piece here, so I'm going to grab my paintbrush, and it's damp, so I'm adding in a little bit of water here to my glue, and then I'm just going to paint my glue onto my cardstock. And this is just a regular smooth white cardstock, nothing fancy. So then I will position my rice paper right on here. Starting from the center, smooth that out toward the edges. Now, unlike decoupage paper, you don't need to coat the whole surface of this with glue, but I do like to go around the outside edges, especially when I'm working with a larger piece, just to make sure that I've gotten glue all around those edges on there. And there you go, super simple to do. Just let that dry and you're ready to use it for lots of projects. Now, I've got another technique that I want to show you because this is going to give you a really soft and subtle effect. What if you want to have those edges stand out a bit more? Well, we're gonna bring back in our stays on ink pad for this. So let me move this aside and bring in another torn piece of rice paper. Now what I can do here is take this stays on and ink around the outside edges. So these are the torn edges. I do have to hold this kind of carefully as I'm going. And again, you can ink your edges heavily or not so heavily. There we go. And then what I can do, once you can see I've got that dark edge on there, maybe I'll add a little bit more on here so that that really stands out. There we go. And set this aside and then the same process as before. And grab my brush here and put some more glue down on my cardstock piece. And then pop this down like so. Now because I am using a stays on, when I'm working with a water-based medium like an acrylic craft glue, it is not going to smear or blur out. So again, very important to use something like a stays on when you're inking the edges. So here you can see I've got my inked top edge on here. This bottom portion I did not ink, but it does give you a really nice, slightly more defined effect on here. Now I'm gonna show you a card. Whoops, we'll look at the front in a little bit, but I've added in this inking technique here on the inside. So we're gonna start with our the inside of our card and work a bit backwards. Inking the edges of the rice paper, and then I glued it on top of this pattern paper. Now, at first I was worried that the two patterns would compete, but I think it works pretty well, especially given that dark edge. So then also on the inside of my card, I've got one of those nested circle dies from Hot Off The Press and a Dazzle message. So looking at the card front, as you can see, I've, got, I've taken advantage of the border printed on that pattern paper for the bottom area of my card, immediately giving me color and design on my card front. And then I have this fancy lattice die cut from Pattern Paper. If I'm wiggling this, I think you can see that I've got some shine on here. So this is using another medium from Creative Expressions. This is the Warm Gold Sparkle Texture Paste. So I'm gonna do another quick demo here 
working also with this little snippet of um, the fancy lattice die. And what I'll do is just take a bit of this medium. You can see I've used quite a lot of this. It's another one of my favorites. And I'll use a palette knife just to get a bit of this out and onto my craft mat. And then, let's see, I'm gonna take this brush, the same one that I was using earlier, it's just a flat brush, and brush this medium on here. So here we go. Now you can do this either before or after you do the die cutting. You can die cut um, the shape from a piece that already has this medium on it, or you can do it from the die cut area. So then, I'm gonna mop this up quickly here, the benefit of working on a craft mat, and you can see that beautiful sparkle on here, something really nice and subtle. So giving a warmer effect than the um, Glitter Kiss will. So there, once I've got that on here, I've just glued this in place right on top of some pattern paper, and then I've got my die cut chipboard elements on here too. So I've got the a black circle of um, cardstock, simply cut, and then the chipboard musical instruments. I've got this fan, a little bit of ribbon on here, and of course, a script dazzle message. And then another quick look at the card inside, and you can see how that coordinates. And this is our last project of the day featuring the Desire Collection from Stamperia. Now, I want to say a big thank you to our friends at Stamperia and a special thanks to you for joining us today. We're really glad that you're here and we're so happy you're part of the Paper Wishes family. Do feel free to leave a comment because we love to hear what you think. Each item can be purchased separately and you can see them below. However, we've also bundled them into a creative money saver just for you. For the money saver, just see this webisode on paperwishes.com. And if you're watching us on YouTube, just have a look in the description box below this video. You'll find a link that will take you to our Paper Wishes webisodes page and you can see everything I just mentioned. If you enjoyed our video today, we'd really appreciate a thumbs up. It helps people to find our channel. And don't forget to subscribe. We create three to five videos each week, so there's always something fun to inspire your creative spirit.